Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel True Crime and Trials where I discuss true crime and trials and we are on day 12 of the Derek Chauvin trial and what a day for the last couple of hours of it I had my jaw on the floor it was unbelievable um, so let's get on with it so we can get to the crux of this defence case because wow um, the state rests so they're done we don't hear anything about Morris Hall I'm trying to find out so so we have um, an ex-police officer who executed a traffic stop on the 6th of May 2019 um, which involved George Floyd um, he was a passenger and the play footage um, but beforehand, the police officer says that George was non-compliant. Um, he wouldn't respond or do what he was asking him to do. And he thought he had put something in his mouth. Um, so they play the footage. You can see for yourself, he is acting a bit like he did on the 25th of May. Um, the officer does ask George to take off his seatbelt. And George doesn't at first. It takes him a few times of asking for George to do it by which time this officer is losing his temper um he's George says he doesn't want to get shot um so meanwhile while George is protesting um the officer is getting pretty angry starts swearing um he just George just keeps repeating he doesn't want to get shot um there's another another officer um who I presume tells George Floyd to spit out whatever he put in his mouth um, and George Floyd says it was one yellow pill um, and he's threatened to be tased at this point because he's just not complying he's not doing what they're asking him to do um, and George does what George does and he apologizes I mean he's not a huge threat he's just not doing what they're asking him to do um, you know a bit of patience and he would eventually but i can see how frustrating it is um so on the cross the officer um had his gun drawn when he approached the passenger side um i mean george did follow you know the instructions but with a bit of protest so we have, a, have um, an ex-paramedic who saw George on the 6th of May after this incident. She was asked to go to the police department to have a look at George. Um, she says it was quite hard to assess him because he was upset and confused. And George Floyd, Floyd told her he had been taking multiple drugs every 20 minutes. It was an opioid-based drug and also he told her he had taken another pill as the police were arresting him. So there we go. Um, she says his blood pressure was 216 over 160. That's high. Um, she says based on this and other issues, she re recommended George Floyd be taken to the hospital. He didn't want to go, but she managed to convince him. Um, and at first he denied having blood pressure issues, but then she asked him again and he admitted he had hypertension and hadn't been taking his medication for months. Um, he had taken seven to nine Pyrosect. She asked him why and he told her that he was addicted. And again, telling her he didn't want to go to the hospital. She says he had a normal heart rhythm and respiratory rate. So, on to the, the next witness, who is Shawanda Hill. She's the ex-girlfriend of George Floyd, and she was a passenger in the car on the night of the incident on the 25th of May. Now, <clears throat> she obviously doesn't want to be there. She gets a bit arsy at times. Um, she was at Cup Foods when George was in there. Um, she says his behaviour appeared to be normal. He was happy and alert. And he offered to give her a ride home. That's why she happened to be in the passenger seat. So when they were in the car, she says after a short period of time, George Floyd just fell asleep. Um, and he was asleep when the employees from Cup Foods came over to try and get him back into the store. And she says it took them a while to actually arouse him. Um, she says he would wake up, say something and then fall back asleep again. 
um <clears throat> she says this was a sudden behavior change to what she saw in the store but she says that he had already told her he was tired when they were talking inside the store hmm um so all that proved that george was tired it didn't really prove anything major so next we have a park police officer he's a licensed peace officer and he assisted on the day of the incident on the 25th of may 2020 he arrived when george floyd had been handcuffed and he was lent against the wall as we've seen in the footage um one of the officers asked this witness to check floyd in the system which he did um, he saw them taking George Floyd to the squad car. He went to go assist them and they told him to go and keep an eye on George Floyd's car and the other two witnesses. Um, eventually, he could see and hear a crowd building and this made him concerned for the officers. Um, but he stayed where he was as this is what he'd been told to do. So, he says from what he could hear, the voices from the crowd sounded aggressive. Fair enough, but he couldn't see what was going on, so... Um, they show his body, body cam footage and while he is stood with Shawanda and Morris, they are both commenting on how George Floyd is resisting and won't get in the car. Um, they ask Shawanda and Morris what their names are and Morris comes up with the name of William Ricardo. Um, and Morris says he was getting a ride with George Floyd. Um, I mean, as usual... Nelson is going hard at this crowd. I think just give it up, Nelson. It's not working. Everyone can see that that crowd was angry for a reason. They weren't threatening the police officers. They were trying to stop them from killing George. Simple as that. So um, next witness is a recall witness, um, a police officer, a medical support coordinator. He asked her about excited delirium. Now, this is absolutely bloody ridiculous. He wasn't suffering with excited delirium. None of the symptoms say he was suffering from excited delirium. I don't know why Nelson is going down this route. He's just making himself look absolutely ridiculous and that he's just reaching. Um, one of the officers, Officer Lane, had attended the training about all this. Um, she says that cardiovascular disease, illicit drug use and mental health can cause excited delirium. People suffering from excited delirium could rapidly, rapidly go into cardiac arrest. George wasn't exhibiting any symptoms. We've, we've heard in past testimony he wasn't suffering from that. He wasn't showing superhuman strength. Otherwise, he wouldn't stay laid down on that ground letting them kill him he would have he would have got them off it's just ridiculous it, this is the worst defense i've ever heard um the cross-examination um in training they are taught to put individuals into the recovery position if they are suspected with excited delirium so again it, it's made the argument look ridiculous if they thought that he was suffering from excited delirium, they handled that wrong as well. So, your point is, Nelson? So, here we go. The biggest witness of the day. He's an expert in police practices and use of force. And this guy is just absolutely unbelievable. Um, he starts off by saying he thinks D Derek Chauvin was justified and was acting with objective, reasonable reasonableness following policy and so is expected he says everything the officers did was right uh okay so can we get to the point where you think that it's right that they sat on him and Derek Chauvin was sat on his neck for nine minutes can you can you explain that um According to this witness, George Floyd was still resisting even when he was on his knees. What the hell? No, he wasn't. He was perfectly still. He even said, thank you. Um, and he says EMS could do better, do a better job at giving medical care than the officers. Hmm. Really? So that's why they didn't want to help him because they thought that EMS would do a better job. 
Um, so why not just hold him down and wait for them to arrive? Absolutely ridiculous. And I'm trying really hard not to swear at this point. Um, he says the prone is not a use of force. It's a control technique and doesn't hurt. <laughs> my god what what he says that an obese person is prone to positional asphyxia okay he says because of the traffic the crowd and the fact that george fly was still somewhat resisting then these are valid reasons to keep george in the prone position oh my god it just gets worse so i i was like i was texting my best friend we were both absolutely astounded at this witness and we both agreed that we hoped the prosecution would tear this witness apart so the cross-examination from the prosecution the witness says that chauvin had his knee on him but he wouldn't say he was on top of him um, and this is because um, he says he won't say Derek Chauvin is on top of George Floyd because he sees that as laying down on someone. <laughs> what the fuck? Sorry, but what? Um, so having your knee on top of someone isn't laying on, isn't being on top of someone because you need to be physically laid on top of them. Um, he doesn't know specifically how the Minneapolis Police Department defines force. So, go on. Your testimony is done. If you come on the stand speaking about an incident that happened in Minneapolis and you don't know what that police department defines or defines as use of reasonable force, then why? Are you, what, what are you doing? So, he says, George Floyd was actively arresting, resisting for a couple of minutes while in the prone. Uh, where? Um, uh, <laughs> so, the witness had said that Derek Chauvin's knee was in the upper back area and the prosecution just had to get that footage. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was on his neck. Um, now he's trying to say that Derek Chauvin's foot was off the ground possibly because George Floyd was moving around. I mean, ugh, come on. Um, and it turns out this witness doesn't know the difference between struggling or writhing. So, was George struggling or was he writhing because he couldn't breathe? So, he says George Floyd is still not complying because, right. When, George, when you watch the footage, George Floyd is in the prone position. He's got one, he's got his hand, hands handcuffed and he's actually got one in the back and one that's been obviously caught underneath him. So, according to this witness, George still isn't compl complying because his arms are like that. He says the hands should be resting, wait for this bit, his hands should be res resting in the small of their back comfortably i mean even the prosecution lawyer was like did you just say resting comfortably he he just will not i mean even the prosecution witnesses up to a point said yes most of this was reasonable force up until they put him in the prone position i mean they had balance with their testimony. This witness is just absolutely unbelievable. He cannot point out anything that Derek Chauvin did wrong, even though to the vast majority of the population of this entire planet can see that there was no need for what Derek Chauvin did. So sitting on a man's neck, having knee on a man's neck in the prone position when he said he can't breathe for over 26 times is reasonable when he's not resisting he's um not moving come on i mean this is just ridiculous and at this point the defense's case is over he's just absolutely ruined it, it whatever case he had he's gone 
I mean, he, he even says he couldn't tell if George Floyd was struggling or struggling to breathe. The whole testimony just got worse and worse and worse with every question, every answer. It just unbelievable i was just sat there with my mouth open throughout the entire thing i even struggled to write it down i had to keep rewinding because i was just flawed unbelievable i mean it's going to be interesting how the defense can even pull this back at this point I, like i say their case is over it's just no no absolutely disgusting so let's see what today brings who knows so after that, I'll be back with more tomorrow. So until then, bye for now.